I like all the chatter. Amen. It's a good looking crowd on a Wednesday night. Amen. I like it. No, I was definitely looking down here. <laughs> uh, so appreciate each and every one of you coming, being in the house of the Lord. And uh, I don't know about you, but I need Wednesday nights. Sometimes it's that Wednesday night and just get you on to Sunday. And, uh, and so I appreciate you coming and being a part tonight. And uh, I believe the Lord is going to help us. Amen. Before we get started and go to the Lord in prayer, uh, got still got several needs. Continue to remember Sister Polly and um, Brother David and Sister Leo and... Um, um, I do this every time. Maybe one day I'll learn to write it down, and I won't forget it. But uh, we got several different ones battling different things, cancer, and uh, just just a lot of a lot of people with a lot of different things going on. Maybe you got a need tonight you want to mention. Remember this. Somebody else? Family. Amen. Etheridge family. All right. Anyone else with a need? Bristol. All right. All right. Just remember this. Anyone else with a need for we pray? Just remember our community, our, our county, our city, our nation, this world, uh, our leaders. Um, we may not always agree with everything that's done, but we are instructed to pray for them. And so let's make sure we're doing that. Uh, make sure we're praying for our leaders. And uh, you've got lost loved ones. We've all got lost loved ones. Need to be saved. And uh, we have people that walk in the doors of this church that need to be saved. Amen. And I want conviction to get a hold of them. Uh, whether it be through singing, whether it be through preaching, whether it be through whatever. I want them to get saved. I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. So let's pray uh, for lost people. That God would get a hold of their hearts some way, somehow. We don't always like to pray that way, but you would rather him get, away, get a hold of them any way that he can than them lead this life and go to hell. And uh, so let's pray for lost souls. That God would save them, deal with their heart and their life. Any other needs tonight before we pray? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Take these needs before him. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing. Lord, I'm thankful we have the opportunity and the privilege to be in your house tonight. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us in this place. But, Lord, there's many needs and many requests that have been made known. And, God, even those that were not, you know and you see each and every situation, every need, every circumstance, Lord. God, I pray that you would move, that you would minister to give healing to those that are sick. God, that you would comfort those that are hurting, that have lost loved ones. And I pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would speak to them. Let your presence be real and known to them. God, I pray, Lord, for lost souls. I pray that you would get a hold of their lives. God, that they would not be able to leave this life lost and undone with you. But, Lord, that conviction would find them. Grace, mercy and grace would follow them. And, Lord... 
I pray, God, that you would move in them. They would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. And, God, I pray tonight, God, for our nation. I pray for our county. I pray for our communities. I pray for this world as a whole. I pray for our leaders. I pray, God, that you would move and work in their hearts, that you would lead them and guide them and direct them. If they're lost, let them come to know you. And, God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us here tonight. God, that you would speak to us through your word, that you would let it change us and transform us, convict us, challenge us, Lord. God, move and work in each and every one of us that we leave this place different than what we came. Lord, I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I've, I've been in a, a pool on which way to go tonight. I'll just be honest with you. Um, and so I'm going to give you just a tidbit of both of what we got. But in James chapter number 1, verse number 19 is where we'll go to start with. Uh, and then we'll try to get into this other. I've um, been reading a book. And uh, that book has, <laughs> and I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I was in the office the other day and I was not. I didn't have a book besides reading the Bible that I was reading. And uh, I just kind of got up and was just kind of looking through my little library of books I got in there in the office. And, and uh, I had, I thought all of, my, all of my Bible study material I try to keep on one side of the, the, the bookshelf. And then on the other side I've got like actual just books to read or whatever and I thought all of them were on that side. Well, somehow or another, I had one or two tucked in on the other side. And uh, for whatever reason, I walked over there and I grabbed one of those books that was not where it was supposed to be, I guess you would say. And I started reading that book, and I got about three chapters into it. And I realized that it wasn't by accident that I had grabbed a hold of that book. And um, I have had a burden uh, here lately just... To see people change, to see not not just you as church people, to not just to see you get closer to Christ, but to see our world change, to see our community change, to see uh, people around us. You know, I, I don't, and I'm just going to kind of talk to you from my heart tonight, that'd be all right. I don't want to just wander through this life with no purpose and no goal in mind. I don't want to just come, I've told you this before, I don't want to just come and, and pastor this church and just fill a position. It's not, that's not what I'm called to do. That's not, that's not the whole purpose of this. Yes, this is, this is where I'm at. This is my position. This is my title or whatever you want to call it, label it, however you want to. doesn't matter. But the fact is, first and foremost, I'm called to be a minister of this gospel everywhere that I go. And, and so I've just, I've had this on my mind for, for a long time, I guess, but it's just really here in the last uh, several months, two, three, four months, I guess, has been really just kind of, and you probably can tell it based off of our Wednesday night sessions here lately and even kind of what I preach Sunday night. But I, I want this church, I want us to make a difference in this community. I want us to have an impact in this community. And I told you before, it's not to pack the pews of this church. It's not to fill the chairs of this church. It is to fill the kingdom of heaven. It is to reach souls, people that are broken, people that are lost, people that have no purpose in life, or, or they feel that way. We know that everybody was created in the image and the likeness of God. And, and you know... There are people that are living this life and they don't know where they're going. They don't know what they're doing. They're broken. They're hurt. They're wounded. They're scarred. They've got all these things going on in their life. And they're looking for answers and they're searching for answers. And you and I have what they need. We've got exactly what they need. And, and I want to make sure. I have, I have heard a story. I got stopped just this past, uh, well, just this well, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I got stopped and by somebody that used to go to church here. And just through the processes of time, they 
things happen and they, they just they, they haven't been in church and they, they knew that and they was honest about that but, but they, they was talking to me and, and I told them I said you know we'd love to see you at church we'd love to have you we want you to come back and when we just got to talking and carry on a conversation and, and that person made this statement and just began to tell how much of an impact this church has had on this community and, and the impact that different ones has had on just their life and, and I, that's just over and over and over. It's just one thing after another. It's from, from reading a book to hearing messages that I listen to being preached just from other preachers and talking to different ones and everything just seems to be funneling in the same direction. I don't think that God speaks by accident. I don't think that God does anything by accident. I, I think everything is ordained and orchestrated by God. If we are walking in His will and fulfilling His will and being led by the Spirit, I believe that He does everything on purpose. And so I don't think it's accident that God has been pushing all this uh, in my direction and leading us in this way. I believe that God wants to do something great inside this community. I believe that God wants to do something great in this city. And, and, and I've, I've, I've got that book and I'm going through that book and I'm, I'm highlighting and I'm taking notes and I'm writing and I'm doing all these different things and, and, and trying my best to make sure I... The worst problem I have with reading a book, I get it in chapter 1 and chapter 2 and then by the time I get to chapter 6 and 7, I done forgot about what happened in 1 and 2. That's just the way my brain works. So I've got to write down and make, take notes and all these different kinds of things. But I, I want us to look right here in James chapter number 1 because I said all that to say this. In James chapter number 1 and verse number 19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye here and we'll be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What are you, what are you getting at, Brother Justin? We, we talk, I said this maybe even last Wednesday night. The, 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 the Christian a lot of times talks the talk, but it's time we walk what we talk. It's time that we don't be just hearers and talkers. We're, let, me, let me just say this. I can talk a good talk. Come on, help me out a little bit. We can talk a good talk, but when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, are we being doers? Or are we only being hearers? And that's what I want to ask you. And we're going to move into something in just a minute. If, if the Lord lets us get there, we're going to get there. But I, I really want you to think about it because I have heard this my whole life. I have heard this scripture preached. I have heard it taught. I've heard it said. I have even taught from it myself. I have even preached from it myself. But, but here lately it has been rolling over in my head. And, and God just speaking to me again. I'm going to say this until I feel like you've got it. I am not going to preach or teach anything to you that has not first dealt with me. And this has been rolling over and over in my mind. Justin, do not just be a hearer and a preacher. Don't just be a, a, a hearer and a teacher of the word or a preacher of the word. But be a doer of the word. Because if we're not careful sometimes, even we as ministers and teachers and preachers and pastors, we'll get so caught up in delivering the message, we forget to live it. I'm just being real with you. 
I'm not, I'm not here to put on a facade. I'm not here to act like I'm perfect. I'm not here to act like I've got it all together. But sometimes we get so caught up in talking about what we want to do. We get, we get so caught up in the talking of how we're going to win souls. And we get so caught up in the talking and all the things that we're going to do. And we talk it. And we hear it. And we are preached to it. And we receive it. But when does it get to a place where I quit teaching it and preaching it and I start doing it? When does it get to the place where I quit hearing it and talking about it and I just start doing it? We've been talking about getting the men's ministry together, getting it back going. Been talking, uh, I've talked to Spud and Alan's been talking about it and Brother Rock, we've all been talking about it, trying to get, get it back going, WT, different ones. We've all been talking about trying to get the men's ministry back going. And I told them the other day, I said, the thing about it is we got to start somewhere. And it's not just men's ministry. We, we, they're all on board with me. They agree 100% with me. And we finna get this thing kicked off. But the fact is, it doesn't just boil down to men's ministries. If we're really going to affect this community, we're going to have to get beyond just hearing and talking about and, and preaching about what the Bible says that we are to do. Because the Bible says, because it goes on down in that last verse of that chapter. Read it. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Pure religion is taking care of others. Now it lists the fatherless and the widows because most of the time they're the first ones that are neglected. But the fact is it shifts the focus from me to them. It shifts the focus from what I can attain and what I, this and me and so on and so forth. We've got to shift our focus from here to there. We've got to get to a place where I'm not just hearing and I'm not just receiving, but I'm responding and I'm acting on what I'm saying and what is being said. Because let's be honest. Or let me back up. Let me be honest. What have I done since we spoke last Wednesday night that has affected that community? But just, I sure wish you'd get off all this. Well, I ain't because it's my heart. I'm telling you, I will not be satisfied until we are reaching people. I am thankful for what God is doing and I am thankful for the way that God is moving but there is still people hurting and there is still people that's searching and there is still people that's looking and the fact is most of the time they're not going to just walk in the door. They know we're here. They know this church is here. I had no intentions of getting into all this. But it's the facts. They know this church is here. <laughs> this June walked in the door. She said, I'm glad you found Butler First Assembly. After my statement I made the other day about not knowing it was here until just a few years ago. She said, we thought we was pretty well known around these parts. I said, I never had any business or dealings in Butler. It was just literally passing through. I never, I never turned at the red light. We always went through the red light. They know we're here. These people in this community, they know where this church is. And I want to give you one little snippet of what I read in that book. I read in that book that said, we're all about providing things that are for the community. But we're not always as quick to do things with the community. What do you mean, Brother Justin? We host events and we do these things and we broadcast it out to the community and we say, here, this is for you. This is what we offer. But are we really, really, really willing to get down where they are and get with them and reach them? We want them to come to us, but we don't always want to go to them. Boy, I'm telling y'all, one day y'all going to walk in here and I'm going to have the biggest mirror y'all ever seen. And it's going to be sitting right here so you can see you what I see. Some days I won't take his microphone off 
put on that chair and go back to my office and hide. But I want it to get down in here. Because if you're just here and it's here. But when it gets down in here, I've, you've heard me say this, I'll say it a hundred times over. When it gets here, you do something about it. Because if, if, if you let something, you let your family need something, you act on it because they're here. It's the truth. You act on it because they're here. They're not just some person you know or some person you've been acquainted with, but they're somebody that is in your heart that you love and you care for. And we have got to get to a place where we love people that it gets us to a point where we're willing to do and not just hear. And I just wonder, and I'm just asking, are you willing to get on board to make a difference? Are you willing to be more than far? Are you willing to be with? Are you really willing to do more than here? Are you willing to do? Are you willing to get down to where the rubber meets the road and make a difference in somebody's life? Be hearers of the word, not doers only. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit. Notice that action requires you going. It requires you leaving where you are and going to where you are they are the fatherless and the widows and their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world that's a powerful verse that's a powerful powerful verse now we talked about the word We've talked about being hearers and not being doers and not hearers only. Now let's look at a few things with the Word of God. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter number 1. One thing, and I had I never thought about it like this, I guess, in a sense. One thing about this word is you can trust this word. If you go back, and I'm not going to go there for the sake of time. If you go back into Isaiah 14, 7 and 14, it prophesies that there would be a child that would be born of a virgin. That was in Isaiah in the Old Testament. And then we find in Luke chapter number one, 20, chapter number one, verse number 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. 
he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. And therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Go all the way back to the prophets. Isaiah in chapter number 7. And it being prophesied that there would be a child that would be born of a virgin. And then we come all the way back to the New Testament in the book of Luke. And we read about a child being born of a virgin. Now if you've got enough faith to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, brought into this world and you believe that happened, you've got to believe that there's enough trust, enough truth in this word that if it was prophesied all those years ago for it to come to pass, you've got to have faith that everything in this word is true. You've got to have faith. When you begin to look at what goes on and you begin to, you can go back to the Old Testament and you can look in the Old Testament and the prophets and you can find prophecies that were made that would later come to pass and now we see prophet, prophecies in, in, in olden days now we see them coming to pass in the day and hour that we're living in there's no way that you can convince me that this is not the infallible word of God when I begin to think about all these other people and, and, and all of all these other religions and what they base theirs off of and what they read and what they go on. And I begin to look at that and think about what's leading them versus what's leading me. I'm thankful that I can rest and I can know that when I read this word and when I go through this word that I know without the shadow of a doubt that I'm reading the words that he wanted me to read. That I, I don't have to question it. I don't have to wonder if it's true. I don't have to wonder if it can be trusted. But I, just in my own testimony, in my own personal life, I have found where I have been able to go to the Word of God and stand on the Word of God and this Word never fail me. You can use the proof of the fact that it was prophesied in Isaiah all the way into Luke where it come to pass that he would be born of a virgin. They would call his name Jesus. You can prove it on that fact but I can stand before you and tell you that even going beyond what I just read to you that the fact is I have found time and time again where I have relied on this word and this word never failed me. There's truth in this word there's, there's, there's life in this word. I have lived my life, not my whole life, since I got saved, I have lived my life based off of this book as the best of my ability. Am I perfect? No. Do I fail? Yes. Do I mess up? Absolutely. But I have tried my best to live my life according to this word and not once has it led me wrong. Now I've led myself wrong. And I've done my own thing and I've lived my own life. But every time I walked in accordance to this word, it led me in the right way. This word can be trusted. This word is inspired. In 2 Timothy 3 and 16, It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We talked about many times in here, I have made the, the statement that, or maybe, maybe not made the statement necessarily here, but I've prayed it, I know in here, many times that you read this word and this word will cut you. This word will convict you. This word will challenge you. It will change you if you let it. But it, it says it's, it's profitable, for, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It doesn't say that it's harmful. We don't always like it. 
It don't always taste good. It ain't always easy pill to swallow. It don't always go down good. But the fact is, it is profitable that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works to make sure that you have what you need as a child of God to be able to live, to be able to stand, to be able to fight, to be able to overcome, to be able to withstand, to be able to do whatever you need to do in order to be a child of God, to, in order to be a good soldier, in order to be able to fight this fight of faith, this word gives us what we need. There's times where I have fought battles literally with this word alone. Get down and pray and I don't have words to pray. I, I try my best to talk to somebody and I don't know what to tell them and they don't really know what to tell me, but they take me to the word. And there's times in my life where I don't always know the answer and I don't always know what to do, but I can dig in that word. And time and time again, there are times where I fight my battles off of this word. But again, it has to be applied. Reading it and knowing it is one thing, but unless it's applied, it is of no benefit to us. If we don't take this word and we don't, allow this word to minister and to change and to correct, to give instruction. If we don't allow it to do those things, what profit is it to us? I, I thought about the rich young ruler. What must I do to have eternal life? He said, well, you keep these commandments. And he gives him a list. I've kept every one of them since I was young. I do all those things. He knew the word. He knew what it was. But he's not applied it enough to get the fact that he has got to do what this man is telling him to do in order to inherit eternal life. And we've got a lot of people that walk around in this life and they know that word, but it's not applied. Hey, some of them that know it better than some of us do. But they don't apply it unless they want to argue about it. That's the truth. They know it. Some of them that know this word that would blow your mind, not even save people. I've had conversations with them. They know it. But it has not been applied to their life. They've not allowed it to convict them. They've not allowed it to correct them. They've not allowed it to, to give them instruction in righteousness. Therefore, they are not who they are supposed to be. But when I think about what this word has meant to me through my life, when I think about how it has affected me through my life and all that it has done, there have been times where you read that word and all of a sudden you get to something and the Spirit convicts you. Just cut you a little bit. And it's not easy. But that moment that you submit to that word, that moment where you ask God to help you with that thing, and you allow God to minister and, and work on that thing in your life. That moment of knowing that you've allowed God to change something that was not right. It's almost like going back to the altar when you first got saved. It's almost like just a, a freshness. When was the last time that the word of God changed you? I didn't say when was the last time that you heard the word of God and you felt something. I said when was the last time you heard it and it changed you. What do you mean, Brother Justin? You heard the word and you walked away and you was different. Something in your life changed because of the word of God. Not because of some person, not because of something else, but simply based off of the word of God. A fine line that, I say a fine, it's not really a fine line, it's a, it's a hard line, I guess you would say sometimes, that you try to 
make sure you steer clear of as a preacher is not trying to make it more than what it is. Or thinking that you've got to add to it to make it appealing. Can I get an amen from a preacher? <laughs> Sometimes we think, well, if I, I could pitch it this way or if I can pitch it that way or if I can make it sound like this or I can make it sound like that to make it more appealing. You don't need it. It's the Word of God. There is enough power just in the pages. It don't need my opinion. It don't need... It don't, it don't need my commentary. It gets it probably. <laughs> Sometimes it may not should. But when you think about this word, I don't know what you may be facing, what you may be going through in your life, what you may be dealing with, but I can guarantee you there's an answer in this book. Now I'm pointing at an iPad, but you get what I'm saying. In this word, there is an answer. You can depend on this word. It does not change. Now there's different translations and there's different things like that. And, and, but that word does not change. It's the same. And it still applies the same today as it did 30 years ago. The same power that it talks about that they experienced then is the same power that you and I can experience today. I don't think some of you believe that. I'm not calling names. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just saying I'll let you figure out who. But if we really believed it, if we really believed that, that, that that same power is the same power that you and I have today, I believe we'd see more miracles. I believe we'd see more souls saved. I believe we'd see a lot more things done for the kingdom of God if we really believe what this word said and applied it. Go back to what I started with. Not only hearers, but doers. It gives a whole list of things. These signs shall follow them that believe. What's following you? Only you can answer that. What's following you? Because it said, these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm, now I'm standing up here wondering what's, well, what's following me. What, what, what things am I allowing this word to change in my life? What things am I allowing it to, to correct and to convict and to challenge in my own life? I know, I know that I am a flawed human being. I know that. You know why? Because I wrestle with this flesh every single day. And you know the only way that I can keep this flesh under subjection, number one, through prayer, through that word. And if you're not doing the two, you're not going to keep that flesh under subjection. Why, Brother Justin? Because... All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I know this is real elementary, but I'm going to throw this out there, okay? This is free of charge. If you don't pray and you don't read, you're not going to stay saved. Somebody please give me an amen. Make sure we don't need to get down to doctrinal basic preaching here. It's facts. How do you know, Brother Justin? Because I've tried it. Let's be honest. I was a teenager. Got saved. 
you go through trials and you go through hardships and you, you, you want to live right. Your heart's to want to live right. But nonetheless, you go through different things and, and temptations arise and all this kind of stuff. And before you know it, you ain't prayed in two days. You ain't picked up the Bible in a week. And all I'm doing is getting further and further and further away. It's not my heart. It's not what I wanted. But it happened. But if I stay in that prayer closet, if I stay on my knees and my face before God and I bury my face in that book and I read that word, it will not help but push you closer to Him. That's truth. That's truth. That's, that's, just, that's just the way it is. We sat in a... Uh, I don't really know what they called that Monday morning, a session, I guess you would call it, maybe a teaching at regional council. And she was teaching on the fruits of the Spirit, not the gifts of the Spirit. She was teaching on the fruits of the Spirit. And she was going through that and talking about those things and the way that they grow in your life. And as she was talking, I, my mind's racing and I'm trying to take a few notes here and there and, and trying to listen all at the same time and I don't do too good at doing both. But as she's talking about that and I'm thinking, my mind's still on all this that's running over in my brain about being a, a doer and not a hearer only. How do I get to a place where I allow the fruits of the Spirit to be evident in my life? Well, the obvious answer is you've got to get closer to Him. How do I get closer to Him? Prayer and the Word. Prayer and the Word. Well, Justin, why are you why are you why are you talking about this? Why are you on this tonight? Because one of this is one of the most important things that we do for you to be able to, for us to be able to be effective we have got to be in the word and in prayer what are you going to use when you get out there the word what what did Christ, when he was tempted, what did he combat with? The Word. Now the enemy will try to manipulate and twist, and that's what we're going to face. And you've got to know what it says. We've got to know it. We, we've got to, to, to have it completely embodied and embraced within us. And I'm afraid there's a lot of people in this world that fight a battle but they're really not sure about their weapon. You think they send, they sign up for the military. Some of you have been in the military. They didn't send you out with a weapon you didn't know the ins and outs of. You had to know how to strip that thing down, put that thing back together. Everything you had to a bunch of times. You had to qualify with that weapon, probably. I know you do nowadays. And should we leave out of this building and go out and have to qualify with what we know? And I'm, only, I'm, I'm asking myself this. Do I have enough? Do I have enough to qualify? Do I have enough to make it? But Justin, why, why are you asking that? Because the fact is, we can always get more. There's always more to learn. There's always more to know. Because this word is alive. Every time you open it, there's something different you may see. We was talking about it the other day. You open that word. You may have read it 15 times. 
But you go back through it and read it again and something new. Because it's alive. It's the only book you'll ever read that is. Pretty good words to live by. I don't want you to think that I am insulting you by. This may seem very elementary and basic to some of you. I am not by any means trying to do that. But 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 what's been on my heart. And what's been on my mind is reaching this community. Do I have all the answers of how to do that? I ain't going to sit here and act like I do. Do I, do I know the, the plans? Do I have it put in place? Do I, do I have it wrote down in some little book somewhere that I've been keeping? I don't. But I do know one thing. If we are going to reach this community like never before and we are going to be effective we've got to be prepared why should we ever expect God to use us in an area if we're not prepared for that I mean I've asked myself the question before. God, why, why, are, why aren't you letting this happen in my life? Why, why is this not being done? Why, why this? Why that? You ask that question. And then I get an answer I don't want to hear. You ain't ready for it. You talk about a gut punch. I went through a time. I was just, I'm fixing to hush. I went through a time. I was not a youth pastor. I was not, I was not anything. I just, it was just a preacher, just called to preach. Phone wasn't ringing. Nobody was calling. Nobody was asking. Had some more preacher buddies that was preachers, and they was preaching, they was doing all these different things, and started bothering me. Why, is, why ain't nobody calling me? I had preached before, preached different places. Why is the phone not ringing? Why is the phone not ringing? Just got discouraged. And then I was praying one day. And I got that gut punch of some things that I didn't even realize had gotten in my heart and in my life that I shouldn't have let get there. But it did. It was like the Lord said, you got to take care of this before you can do this. Did I like it? No. Was it an easy pill to swallow? Absolutely not. You know what I want to say? I ain't, that ain't true. <laughs> Tell the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Don't laugh at me. You've done it too. That ain't right. No, not me. You do realize you're arguing with God, right? You ain't ready. So guess what I had to do? I had to make some changes. I had to get rid of some stuff. I had to clean some stuff up. And guess what? Phone started ringing. Started getting calls. Had to go preach different places. I don't say that to to pin any roses I said that to say that God's not going to use us in certain capacities if we're not ready to be used in those capacities and I want God to be able to use us 
to the fullest capacity that he wants to use us. And I don't want there to be anything that would slow, hinder, or impede him being able to do that. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to insult you. It's not my intentions. So Brother Justin, no. That's what it feels like. It's not my intentions told you if I'm not here if 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 you walked in here every service and every Wednesday night and I patted you on the back and told you you was going to be doing good you're doing great you're doing fine and I patted you on the back and said everything's going to be okay probably wouldn't think a whole lot of me I will say this this church has a heart for people more than some other churches that I've had an opportunity to minister in. And I've been in a lot of places. Not not a whole bunch, but I've been in a lot of places in this area all across the southeast Mississippi and southwest Alabama. And this church has a heart for people. It has a heart for missions. It's evident can see it right here out of this church look at all the missionaries that are out of this church this is this is their home church and they're in the mission field so it's evident that's not what I'm saying I'm saying I think there's more I think there's more and I want him to be able to work through us to full capacity again they may not ever walk in this church as long as they walk through those gates. Now, if they want to come here, I welcome them. Come on, I want you to be here. But as long as they make it. What does that mean, Brother Justin? We shouldn't just be effective in this community. If you are slam out in California, we ought to be affecting somebody. Because we're not just hearers, but we're doers. I hope and pray that I have not confused you to no end tonight. All I'm trying to do is stir up, not agitate. There's a difference. <laughs> not agitate, stir up. I don't want you to be comfortable with just going as you're going. But Justin, you know, there's a younger generation that's coming behind that can do that. You've got breath in your lungs. You've got a purpose. When he gets done with you, you'll lead this life. But as long as you're here, there's still a reason. I don't care how young or old you are, there's still a reason. And we've got a purpose. We've got a reason. And I want to make sure we're doing all we're supposed to do. Are you with me? I want to reach people. If we're not reaching people, what's the point in us being here? If we're not affecting people, we just as well shut the doors and go home. We've got to make a difference. But just, I'll be glad when you get on a different topic. You let me know what you want to talk about and we'll see what we can do. This is where God's got my heart right now. When he tells me to move on, we'll move on. Amen. I appreciate you being here. It's a good looking crowd for a Wednesday night. Amen. I'm thankful for it. Now that's not an excuse for you to say, well, I showed up that time. I ain't going back next Wednesday night. <laughs> I'm just, I'm taking my time right now. I'm scanning the crowd, seeing who I need to text. Say, hey, you wasn't here Wednesday night. We missed you think I won't do it. I do. I appreciate you being here. I really, really do. Amen. And I, I, I'm thankful for all that you do, and I'm thankful for all the more that God's going to do through us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I'm thankful, Lord, for each and every person that's here. Thankful for each and every person that set aside the time to make the point to be in your house tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that this 
not be confusing, that this not, but I pray, Lord, that it would find root in the hearts of each and every person in this building. You've placed us here for a reason. And I'm thankful for all that you have done through this church and every way that you have worked and used this church. But, Lord, I know that there's even more that you want to do. I have felt it in my spirit. I have felt it in my heart for several months now that there's more that you want to do. There's more that you want to reach. There's more people that you want to affect. Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us not to be only hearers of this word, but to be doers. I don't want to just talk the talk. I want to walk the walk. I want to make sure I am putting action. I don't want to just preach. I don't want to just come in here on a Wednesday night and teach. But I want to do the things that I preach and that I teach. I want to live the life that I'm talking about, that you have dealt with me so real on. Lord, I pray, God, that you would help it to take root in every person in this building. God, let this word change us. If there's something that's preventing me from from moving to that next step, if there's something that that is hindering you from being able to work through me more effectively, God, let this word reveal it to me. Reveal it to me in prayer. Speak to me. Let it cut away even when it don't feel good, even when it's hard. God, let it change me. God, because I want to make sure I'm doing all that I can, God to be able to be effective in this day and hour. Lord, wherever we go, whether it's in this community, whether it's in states away, wherever we go, whatever we do, we're making an impact on those that are around us. Lord, I pray for each and every person, God, in this community. There's so many that are hurting and so many that are searching. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be a church that would reach out. Not just call to come in, but to go to and to make a difference. Lord, I'm thankful for what you're going to do. I'm thankful, God, for each and every person that's going to allow you to change them, that's going to allow you to push them beyond their comfort zone, allow you to push them into a place they've never been before, but, Lord, the way that you're going to use them and work through their life, I'm thankful for it. praise you, and I give you glory and honor for everything that you're going to do. It's in your name we pray. Amen.